Salutations everyone and welcome back to one of my favorite mods. Do you know the last days of Europe in which we are playing as a Russian Soviet the Federative Socialist Republic, of course. So let's go and do another focus and if you just saw earlier, I just used Control Shift H to hide the CH Entry Tool mod. Just because it looks a little nicer. It actually looks quite a bit nicer, but we can do this. It's back and goodbye again. So we finished off chasing the sun. In which we have more industrial expertise development. Let's go ahead and do access the or assess the economic structure. Russia wasn't ready for the Germans. It wasn't ready for the West Russian War. Nobody expects the RSFSR to be ready now with a few primitive farms, dirt roads, and bombed out factories to make up an economy. But Russia must be ready and ready it shall be. The economic programs that brought us bountiful success up in the north will be expanded and implemented in the south as well. Our economy must be prepared for a total war against the Germans. Everyone must understand this goal and everyone will work towards it. We get more GDP growth. We get trade change our trade union law. Excuse me, trade union law. To stay control trade unions. Less stability, more less cap, more output, more output. And industrial equipment society development increases as well, which is a glorious, glorious thing. Which actually our equipment is already on state complexes. We're almost at modern industrial equipment, which is great. I don't know if we'll actually get down there by the end of this episode, but regardless, whatever. Industrial expertise is going up by 6.5. Anyone actually relatively close to where we need to be? Oh, look at that. Militarized Academia is about to get to cutting-edge research, which would be awesome. And against the bourgeois decadence, uh, that goes to total mobilization, which I don't want to do. Let's integrate their armies first. The revolution only desires a strong. Defeated armies beyond the Urals consist primarily of bandits, aging officers, and non-socialist elements. Nonetheless, the Stavka recognizes our dire need for men in the front lines and authorizes early conscription programs. Auxiliary detachments must be drafted, consisting only of fresh blood, to be under constant watch by senior officers. These brigades will primarily serve non-combat roles such as cooks, engineers, and drivers. Another issue is a lack of discipline among the new soldiers. The old guard exemplifies diligence, loyalty, spot, and discipline. Recruits who wish to fill combat roles will need to, uh, pass, to, need to pass a test of fire, which may prove fatal for some. However, those that endure will truly be prepared for the slaughter ahead. We get a lot more manpower and equipment. God dang. I mean, we can see the Grand Pinter Prolte of Central Severe taking out Salvin, which I really wish the Salvin could have went here. Because it looks like he's failing right now, but he probably is not going to go do well. Why, why can't we send us off? Why can't we have, like, negotiations? If we both end up in the regional stage, why can't we negotiate with each other? Why can't he join the Sock Intern in which we can crush Central Siberia and unify Soviet Russia together? Why? 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 Ah, oh, it hurts my heart seeing this. Also, I'm building up some more infrastructure here because infrastructure is level 2 and it's hurting our supplies, especially with our tanks. Oh god, that's actually looking really bad. Wow. And they're also training as well, but still. But still. Integrate their armies and then enforce discipline. Reports confirm that recruits do not yet understand the meaning behind war. We do not fight for material wealth or glory for that matter. We fight for the revolution. From the lowest cadet to the highest marshal, everyone is expected to sacrifice themselves for the greater good. The men beyond their roles are unruly. They drink and report late. Examples need to be made of. Need to be made. The Grand Marshal has authorized corporal punishment for those who violate the core tenets of the Red Army, or have poor record by the commanding officer. In cases of desertion or betrayal, the subjects will be terminated on sight. In case of great defeat, limited use of decimation has been permitted. Ooh, I like decimation. 4.3, not bad. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 point sum of full production underway. Actually, research, we're trying to get some more stuff here, which is good. Especially Air Assault 2, which helps out our helicopters. And full standardization, though. The individual soldier is of stout spirit and able body, but that is not enough. We are, if we are to succeed, the men will have to learn to work together. The age of warlords taught a bad lesson, that it is possible to persevere alone. We are a union and there is no room for individual glory. The next war will be one with grand strategy. Organization must be prioritized above all else. Doctrines based on teachings of the Grand Marshal will be taught to all officers, and the staff guide itself needs rebalancing along modern lines. Siberia can wait for a few weeks more. When we conquer, the people of Russia shall see the Red Army in all its splendor, marching in rows like toy soldiers under Grand Marshal Tukhachevsky against the enemies of the revolution. And we get two 50% bonuses for infantry weapons and armor technology and the arsenal of communism. Very cool. The new, new recruits. Crash in Nanjing. Oh well. Private Lyadov stood at attention as Colonel Savinkov. Hello, paced before the men. Tall, burly. His weathered face covered in old scars. Savinkov was a dour, menacing figure. Uh, Lyadov, like all others, had spent the morning drill. Morning drilling. Drilling in the morning. Drilling in the afternoon and drilling at night. Uh, Lyadov had just uh, had about enough, as did so many other men. They were all seasoned soldiers who had seen their fair share of combat in West Siberia, yet Tukhachevsky's officers treated them as if they were fresh recruits, subjected to endless drilling and the droning of political commissars. Not good enough, Sevenkov said, as he always did, his voice calm and even... You are lethargic, dull, and undisciplined. 
You are running the, the drill again. Loud Dog grew angry. They had run the drill countless times already, each time the exact same as the last seven cough. Expected the impossible, Loud Dog gritted his teeth and stepped forward. Comrades, Colonel Seven Cough, he said, facing forward, permission to speak. Seven Cough looked at him as one would, would add a worm, pause, and wait for him to speak. Respectfully, Comrades, Colonel Seven Cough, why must we run this drill so many times? We are all veteran soldiers and know the drill. A look of unbridled rage enveloped Seven Cough's face as he began to speak his words, tumbling out of an rare display of emotion. You have no idea what you're up against, do you? This is not a ragtag army of bandits fighting for this warlord or that warlord, killing each other over tiny scraps of useless Siberian dirt. This is a red army, the last true hope for mankind, and our enemy to the west is the Russian war machine. The most destructive army in human history, lying in wait to finish us off once and for all. If you are not prepared and falter even for a second, they will kill you, your families, your friends, and Russia herself, dooming mankind to an eternity of darkness. So, Private, when I tell you to... To effing run the drill again, you will run the drill again. I don't know why my voice went that way, but it just did. Who advanced the development? Yes. Cool. I'm not even gonna read this. Just, just do whatever we need to do. How's this coming along, too? So, yeah, th this is kind of glitched still, or maybe it's just not in the game yet, which is totally fine. You know, things happen. Yearly contributions. Comcon. That sounds like Comcon. Comcon. Hmm. That sounds like a. Sticky place to be. Anyways, anyways. Oh, yeah, these things are looking pretty bad right now. We definitely need more tanks. Yeah, it's looking great. Tank wise, main battle tanks, we need 400 some. Yeah, oh, military austerity, that's fine. Slash it. There you go. Plenty of plans. We can probably spare actually quite a few of these. There you go. That's, that's, that's a little better. Over here. Oh, look at that. OBT program success. Dimitri sighs and looked at his clipboard. He still had to do another three tests before the designers would take another look at the T-64. He was nearly about to fall asleep before the siren cackled the last signaling yet another ten test run to occur. Dimitri slumped over even more in his chair, hoping that it would end already. Afar from the testing grounds in Murmansk, Alexander Morozov slaved over his blueprints and documents on his desk. A message from Comey had come in from the testing facility that the T-64, what was supposed to be the front's newest state, had constant engine issues. Oil leakage was constant from the main chassis. The chassis as well had to be scrapped and started over nearly four times at this point, occasionally Grand Marshal Tukhachevsky would arrive at the manufacturing facility or faculty to examine the blueprints and other plans. He would offer sage advice to the designers asking about more armor or a longer gun. The designers would always go along with this, making adjustments to make sure that the Grand Marshal saw them doing good work. Just as Morozov was about to send a message back to Onkomi how to fix the engines, another one had come in. The suspension system was having issues again. As the on-site technicians began to receive Morozov's uh, instructions to repair the system in the tank. The Grand Marshal himself arrived to take in the trial of the T-64. As he toured the facility, he walked past the tank, asking if it always broke down. And the site leader shrugged and mumbled a reply before the men moved on. However, as Tukhachevsky walked back around to the testing field, the tank seemed to be moving once again. Dimitri was scribbling down results as fast as he could. Once, For once, there seemed to be no issues within it. He breathed a, a sigh of relief and radioed to Morozov. It seemed that the tank works, Morozov. Oh, double bonus for armor. That, that's the next one. Experimental constructor works. Because last time we tried the whole ferment thing and it didn't go so well. Especially when the poverty rate starts to hit the bucket. And for standardization, a glorious legacy. Once long ago, the Red Army achieved the impossible and defeated an empire spanning two continents, feuding millions of soldiers, all done with the help of the superior Soviet will. The Grand Marshal evokes the past, or evokes the past. The defeats of the last three decades must be erased from the record. The Red Army does not lose and makes strategic withdrawals that fly the Red Banner above the heads of millions of soldiers ready for the meat grinder. The cause is just backed up by decades of history and the years of pride. Only once all of Russia is liberated will we allow ourselves a single day to celebrate. After that, the world shall turn crimson and we will be at the gates of Berlin. Veterans of Long War, less army experience game, which sucks. Even less division experience game, which really sucks. World group of population factor, recovery, attack, defense, experience soldier losses goes up. The arsenal of communism. What is the meaning of this? The foreman bellowed, rushing down the stairs from his office to the factory floor below. A man in red army uniform, uh, red army's officer's uniform, stood at this landing. His way blocked by some of the plant's workers. He was flanked to either side by soldiers, the rifles that as yet undrawn. As Victor approached, the man looked up to him and smiled and greeting. Finally, he exclaimed, raising his voice above the cacophony, Are you the owner of this factory? No, Victor responded apprehensively. I am the foreman. The factory is owned by Mr. Alexander Vitorov. He is not here right now. Oh, well, it is no matter, the officer replied, frowning slightly. I am here on behalf of Marshal Ustinov and the State Committee for Defense Technology. May we speak to you in your office? The foreman scanned the soldiers. He looked like they were ready to crack skulls if ordered. He waved for the soldiers to part, ordering his... Or, wait for the workers to part. Ordering his men to stay below, the officer followed the foreman out. The two uh, sat across from each other in the office above. 
Ah, that is much better, the officer began, relieved to be off the noisy the factory floor. He reached into his jacket, a pocket, and extracted a letter, passing it to the foreman. In that envelope, you will find orders for the nationalization of this plant and its immediate conference. Conversion into an armament factory under the direction of Marshal Usinov and the Minister for Defense Industry. Now, usually the state would send a new foreman to oversee this transition, but due to a shortage of skilled managers, you will retain your position. I will remain here to make sure everything goes smoothly. As you can see, the envelope will also contain specifications for a modernized Kalashnikov automatic rifle variant with 556 by 39 cartridge and guns, the foreman asked. Deeply confused, yes, the officer responded, smiling, it's all in the envelope. But for God's sakes, this is a shovel factory. And yes, it is now a rifle factory. See how it works, foreman? See? Beautiful. Construction. More and more construction. Oh, this is... Oh, man, I wanted such a good ending to happen, but... Oh, Soblin. I didn't even... I mean, I guess they could have gone through, like, console commands and tabbed over and given them stuff or, you know, whatever, but... Eh. I don't want to mess with the game too much, you know. Oh, my bad. Oh, Yemen and Saudi Arabia are killing each other. Oh, and Sudan's on fire. Egypt is, you know, whatever. Who cares? How's Burgundy doing? No, well, he would be doing okay. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, they sent volunteers to uh, Yemen Arab Republic, huh? Cool, a glorious legacy, the plague of humanity. Grand Marshal Tukhachevsky has seen this problem before back in Tambov. A group of reactionary peasants, their heads filled with lies, but the deceitful church rebelled against the Soviet Union. They crucified our soldiers and killed their families, who responded with tanks, artillery, and chlorine gas to eliminate them. It was dirty work and took more than a few executions, but the countryside was pacified today. We have the same disease in our lands with reactionaries and Orthodox Church, and we have the same cure. It's always good to be... or able to cure diseases. Beautiful, my friends. Ah, uh, so many divisions. Actually, let's make sure we got enough tanks, too. Bed research facility, the money keeps rolling on in, and our scientists are loving it. With the budget for our research and development program skyrocketing, we've built new research facilities and upgraded our old laboratories. This won't just allow us to be safer when working, but handle more dangerous materials and ensure greater amounts of research to be done across the private and public sector. New technologies from military to civilian uses are being developed. Of course, this is good for more than just scientists. Now, citizens will be able to enjoy the boon of research and economic bonuses like new industrial technology will keep the economy moving. We'll get back to the schools eventually. All right, let's go and deploy some more soldiers. And by soldiers, I mean no more planes. Yeah, there we go. We got more chaos. You know what? Train them when they're ready. And then ensure political reliability. The SFRSR is a primarily a state run by the military. Everyone of note has at least some degree of experience in the Red Army, as it should be. For how can one lead a revolution if they're inexperienced with fighting? Unfortunately, the government requires far more people than there are commissioned officers, and not everyone can prove their loyalty to the Soviet Union on the field of battle. Oh, chairs attack in Italy. A civilian candidate for a civil service position must be trained and loyal. They must know the Communist Manifesto, what is to be done, and the Red Army and Militia. They must be proven to be loyal to the cause in all ways and have impeccable records. Only then will they be fit to take a paper, stamp it, and put it in a stack. Cool. The Balkali Massacre. Captain Gusarov and his unit nestled themselves halfway up a mountain looking down at the town of Bakali, the tree line obscuring them from the people below. The partisans have been sloppy, allowing him to track them through the forest back to here. Using binoculars, he saw dozens, maybe hundreds of them walk about, guns slung about their backs, talking and interacting with the townsfolk. They evidently felt safe here, safe enough to walk around the streets without fear of reprisal. The townsfolk were almost certainly supporting them. <clears throat> he turned to his unit's radio operator, Private Medellin. Melodin, a young man barely out of school, and in order for him to report that the town of Bakali was in the hands of the partisans and that his unit would be doubling back to base. M Melodin followed his orders, quietly speaking into the radio. A voice from the command radioed back softly into his ear set. Just as Gusarab was about to order his men to prepare to leave, Melodin turned to him and a look of confusion across his face. Captain, he said, placing his hand over his microphone so the command could not hear. They're asking me if they were down... If we are downwind of Bakali, why would they be asking that? Sheer terror gripped Gusarov. What had he done? Even without waiting to give his men an explanation, he ordered them to pack up and move. They marched, ahead, marched them hard and fast further up the mountain as high as they could go. As he expected, the plane arrived in less than an hour, flying over fast over Bakali. As Gusarov and his men turned to watch, it dropped a single payload directly on top of the town before turning up and away. It was only a few short moments before the deathly white smoke began to rise along with the screams. The next day, once the poison gas had cleared, Gusarov took the unit down to Bakali. The bodies were everywhere, some trying, caught trying to flee the town afoot. Others waiting to die in their homes, all clawing it for air as they died. They, as they reached the center of the town, they came across Bakali at schoolyard. Before anyone could stop him, Private Melodin took out his pistol, put it to a simple, and pulled the trigger. A shame, he was a fine radio operator. I feel like I've read that one before, actually. Or something very, very similar to that. 
in another campaign for Russia, but eh, whatever. Somehow we're actually down now to six? What happened here? Oh, special projects, that's what's up. That's what's up. Ensure political reliability. 16 days left. Uh, that's okay. Uh, against the bourgeois decadence, our party's proud banner. It is not enough to merely fight for wages, said Lenin. Russia needs an organization that will promote the values and glories of socialism. It would not be enough to have a strong military, says Tukhachevsky. It must have a strong and organized civilian front to march beside it. The solution was the VKP. The Communist Party will educate the peoples of Russia of the need to liberate the world from the clutches of Nazism and the forgotten glories of socialism. This formidable organization will, be, will compl complement the Red Army and ensure its complete and overwhelming victory just like in 1917. Also, I didn't tell you guys yet. Oh, I guess we have some academic base improvement and some more stability. But I do have a couple of, what's it, Hawaiian honey lemon hibiscus tea. Good stuff, I would say. Pretty good stuff. And we've got probably one more day. Yes, one more day is left. One day. Which really meant two days. Which sucks, but whatever. That is so sad. Soblin. Oh, if only. Oh, we're 100% authoritarian socialists, so. Mikhail, doing a great job. Now, Jelena here is looking pretty good. Ex experience gained minus 10%. I don't really care that much. Not bad, not bad, not bad. Three days left for better motorized equipment. Not bad. I suppose we can probably grab some weapon infantry. Oh, that's 1970, though, actually. Let's grab some more research speed. That'd be pretty nice to do. Very, very good. We got about a week left. Let's go make some better motorized, since we are still using motorized, basic motorized equipment. Uh, we got eight days. Yeah, that's fine. And against bourgeois uh, decadence. Nobody believes frivolity or needs frivolities in daily life, especially if one lives in a social society like we do. One has to ask themselves, do I really need this? Can I use something else? Can I manage with lust? And can I live a more humble life if my country calls for it? Every Russian must ask themselves these questions about every object. As we must ask if our gained foreign supply routes can bring us more useful iterations of the object. Furls must clothe the soldiers. Silk stockings must become parachutes. Pots and pans can make tanks and airplanes. Paper can make shell containers. And rubber can make tires for our trucks. Everything is purchased through sacrifice. And now a little and a little now will guarantee all the comforts of the world once later the Hitlerites are destroyed. Poverty rate gets worse. We go to total mobilization. Holy crap. Civilian factory construction speed minus 50%. I don't like this. I really don't like that one. Because we're all barely chugging along here. And it's chugging. But oh my goodness. I don't want to lose that. Oh, we're down to 3.5 billion. That's not bad. 9.6, not bad, not bad. Before this campaign ends, I would like to get a little bit lower. So it's currently going up by 1. It'll probably go to hopefully just 0, and that's it. Nothing worse than that, so... Oh, look, 6 divisions. We have... What do we have here? Tube tanks and extra plane. Ugh. Yeah, or helicopters, I should really say. Support weapons 4. Yes, please. Meet with Ustinov, our leader, Grand Marshal Mikhail Nikolaevich Tukhachevsky, is a man who has accomplished the most monumental tasks. However, he is still a man, one that ages like the rest of us. We must be wise to prepare for this eventual death, or one that may come more unexpectedly. Fortunately, the far side comrade Tukhachevsky has accepted this eventuality and has gone even so far as to decide on a successor in the event of his death. Dmitry Ustinov is a rising star in the Red Army and will lead the RSF. SR in the, re in the event of our leader's untimely death. He will be summoned to discuss matters of the state with the Tukhachevsky immediately. And we get an audience with the Grand Marshal. Oh no, minus 50%. Why? Actually, it doesn't look that bad. Actually, if we completely get rid of construction spending, we could have an annual deficit, but then we won't be able to build that much. So, it's better to build now and then slash a little bit later for now. Three days left for basic jet fighters. While we go ahead and. Ooh. We're going to need as much construction speed as possible, so. Oh, whoops, my bad. Basic jet fighters. I'd love to do this one. I want to get some better casts at least. Nice. Very nice. And after that, to victory. Ultimate and eternal. Comrades, we are the ones who defeated the Tsars and the lackeys of the capitalist empires. We are the ones who made the Hitlerite bandits bleed for every inch of territory they stole from us. And we are the ones who achieved the legendary victory that threw the Nazis from the double A line. And today we stand triumphant. The Germans thought they could bomb us into submission and they thought we'd give away and fall. And now they'll show them that the Red Army bows to no one. So they decrease scoring time, more political power? Not bad. The meeting with Ustinov. 
And now it is with the Grand Marshal. Grand Marshal, or Marshal Dmitry Yusinov, sealed himself as he entered the Grand Marshal's office. In Tukhachevsky were on good terms, but the Commander-in-Chief was an abrasive, unforgiving man. He could very well have been summoned to be reprimanded for some mistake or worse. Yet when he entered, the, he found Tukhachevsky sitting in a chair, out of uniform, stoking embers in his fireplace. The sweeping melodies of a symphony unfamiliar to Ustinov's ears reverberated throughout the room. Ustinov saluted, but the Grand Marshal merely turned, smiled, and gestured for him to sit. Karamad Ustinov, thank you for your coming. He said, as a general sat across from him by the fireplace, I have something of great importance to discuss. Tell me, Ustinov, what do you know of Alexander? the Great. Ustinov was confused, but answered without hesitation. I know that Alexander was a great general who forged an empire that spanned from Greece to India, Grand Marshal. Do you know what happened to that empire when he died? Tukhachevsky responded, looking at the gen general intently. Ustinov shook his head. It fell apart, torn to pieces by his generals as they squabbled over his corpse. Within a few years of Alexander's death, everything he had built turned to dust. I do not intend to make the same mistake, dear Ustinov. That is why I plan to declare an heir will advance of my death. In advance of my death. The realization of what he was getting at hit Ustinov like a brick wall. He didn't name him heir. He continued to listen, too shocked to speak. You will be that heir, Ustinov. I know I perhaps not communicated my respect for you as well as I could have, but I consider you an excellent general and a loyal comrade. You will make a fine Grand Marshal. I do not know what to say, Grand Marshal, Ustinov responded, stumbling over his words. As a thousand thoughts rushed through his head, I am deeply honored and moved. Tukhachevsky laughed. Do not worry, dear Ustinov. I am not dead yet. There is still much to do. May he long live. Or, long may he live. I have probably some sort of di slight dyslexia. Oh well. Come on, keep building. We got there's never enough construction in the world. And the oh, veterans of the long war we still have. We don't get any more daily army XP. Well, that sucks. That's alright though. And once we get this one done, there probably is another event. So how is this kingdom doing? We have a total of 34 infantry divisions, which is not bad. They have oh, we're gonna kill all those all that manpower off probably. Oh oh, is this national spirits we can see? Or is this... Oh, yeah, we can see this is uh, social development. Not bad. That's kind of cool. Let's see how many divisions does he have. So, 30,000 manpower. Up to 59. That's not bad. He might have up to 20, as low as 21, but... With us being 40 combat width, I think we'll probably do okay. Partial success, huh? Kingdom of Siberia. Oh, probably 40 combat wits. Joseph frowned as he hit his rifle for what felt like the 80th time today. He was one of the soldiers selected to partake in the new weapons trial. From what he had heard, the Grand March would order a whole two knife new type of ammunition to be re researched and developed for the upcoming battles against the German Reich in Moscow. While I gave him great honor, it also took lots of time to prepare. He had to wake up at 4 in the morning to prepare for the day ahead of him, including clean cleaning his rifle in the past day's uniform. As he jogged up to his station, he looked at the box of ammo next to him and was nearly overflowing with 556 by 39 mm the newest type of Soviet ammunition. Well, they had the privilege of having the ammo arrived today already boxed. They had to load it into the magazines. This was the most annoying part of the assignment he had thought. While he knew there was people in the front who would do worse worst task. He thought this could be worse. Some of the other men he worked with had decided to load their ammunition into magazines before they could go to bed with leftovers. Some of the other men decided to load all the ammunition into the magazines first before anything. Alongside him, with just firing the rifle, he needed to always write down his thoughts and the results of each magazine of ammunition. As hours went by, he wrote down even more and more. After lunch, he looked at his notebook. Fifteen pages had been filled with his notes and results of each magazine. So far, he did twelve jams and two whole magazines he had to clear the cartridge out before loading it once again. As he was writing down his last notes, the bell rang, alerting the end of the day. As the men assembled at the main meeting area, the commander spoke to them. He said that the ammunition would be entering full standardization. While the men had their reservations, the commander said this is to be expected with new standards. The men clapped and then went back to their bunks. As Yusuf walked away, or walked back, he thought that the commander was actually being truthful. This could be very good for the front. If not, this could be cause quite the issue for them. Hopefully this won't jam too often. Oh, nice. Let's go ahead and do Project Oregon. Yes. In progress, partial success, success. It says we f we failed that one before, but it still says pending results, so. I'm going to assume we get an event after we complete literally our last focus. Because there's nothing else here, as you can see. Ah, survivors, there we are. The clock ticked gently in the smoke-filled room as the two officers of the Red Army shared a bottle of vodka between them. It wasn't of any particular vintage, nor was it much good in the way of taste, but it was alcohol and it served the two men fine. Jan spoke first, grimacing, grimacing slightly as he swallowed the syrupy and oozily booze. Will we ever recover from what the Germans did to us, I mean? There's sounds was again as Iona uh, considered this a cigarette dangling from between his fingers. No, not the front, Jan cut his friend off quickly. I meant as Russians, as Jews. Ah, said Iona. Perhaps not, please. Keep this between us, but sometimes it gets to thinking. He took a long drag from his cigarette. Governor of the Black League, sometimes I think they might have the right of it. Jan raised a curious eyebrow. That sounds something like treason, Iona. I think the same in my darkest nights, but it's best if we keep such thoughts in our own hands. They sat in silence, digesting the words. Jan knocked back another drink before fixing Iona with a dark look. We are not Kovner. We're not Yazov, but Iona, we, the Russians, the Jews, we will have our blood debt paid. The clock ticked on, and no one said another word, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth, and hopefully we get another event. But if there is no other event, 
what we're going to do, it's already March 70, but we have to wait till 1971 to prepare for the Unification War, in which, well, I'll just probably just go ahead and get to that point right now. So, right now, this, we're not at war yet, it's only September 7th, but we've got Project Oregon inconclusive. The BM-21 began to grunt as it was attempting to go up the hill. A far on observation deck, the Grand Marshal frowned. Had he not invested enough money into making the next generation of rocket artillery for the front, he was puzzled. From what he saw in his reports, progress seemed to be steady, with milestones being reached, as he saw, however. Some corners had to be cut to make it ready by this deadline. Inside the testing facility in Comey, the staff was in a state of disarray while they had some good trials and firing tests with the BM-21. It had mounted issues. The designers had, me had meeting after meeting to discuss these developments, with most ending arguments breaking out. It felt sometimes that the whole project would collapse in on itself, making the rift between designers even wider. However, usually at the end of the day, someone would uh, suggest a quick fix, hoping that it would hold. Well, those who have been optimistic at first, they soon took a nosedive for the worse, even with more arguments erupting over the budget. Some days, after hours of work and discussion, not even a single fix or change was made. All was in the life of the Project Oregon development. As the time went on and on, more of the quick fixes had to be made. The chassis itself was eating quite a bit larger of the budget, something that many of the rocket engineers had an issue with. Again, after the arguments and meetings that seemed to it on a daily occurrence, they finally reached an agreement. By the time they had agreed, the time had run out. Full trials had to begin in the coming weeks. With the clock counting down day by day, they had, they had up to... They had to up their progress. Tukachevsky read this report on his desk inside. While the project could have been seen as a failure to some, they had increased in rocket development. However, the front still needed something to move on to. Or move, move it in place. At least something good came out of it. In which, now, we're going to go ahead and just do and go ahead with... Uh, you know what? Let's go crazy. Project Leshy. Here we are, everyone. And actually, the Kingdom of Siberia declared war upon us, which was actually very nice. But we have Project Leshy just in time for us to go to war with these folks. Pavel wiped the sweat off his face as he jotted down another batch of results from the chemical weapons test. It was the third they've done today, and around the 20th they've done since the weapon could begin to be tested. Human test subjects had been out of the picture due to manpower worries in the upcoming war against the Reich, so the Project Leshy team had been subjected to the use of wild animals in Rome, the Komi Oblast. He then signaled to another scientist coming in. He wanted to take a break. As he walked out of the testing room, he walked past the storage facility while the Comey Republic had quite the chemical weapon stockpile that seemed to be growing by each year. It stagnated soon after. Due to, due to the lack of knowledge and even funding, they had, year after year had failed to come up with new chemical agents or formulas. However, this was an issue for the front. The Grand Marshal directed lots of funding to the program itself and it placed many of the former scientists that had worked in Comey on the new program, unlike the Comey program, though. This time, they had adequate funding and something else Comey didn't have, a port that could bring in information from outside the world on nerve agents and other bioweapons. Pavel walked back into the break room, hoping that there were some tea packets or even instant coffee, a commodity that they only had one or twice every few months. He quickly found some of the instant coffee and went back to his station. As the last test for the day was finished, he wrote his results on it. More of the same, the agent was less lethal than expected. It seemed, uh, of course. Not while being the kill agent they'd hoped for, it still had damaged, damaging properties, mostly the extended brain damage and organ damage. Pavel ripped the sheet off and put, then put it in an envelope for the next scientist to look, take a look at. He then got up, clocked out, and went home as his day was done. Not as potent, but hey, it just works. Thank you, Todd Howitzer. And we're doing a Project Shuka, but we won't be able to finish that because we shall from the motherland and we're on stage four for mining material we have our uh, thing here as well let's see do they attack us at all no they don't so if the thing is completed let's end rurik's pathetic little existence arm is looking pretty good we have a total of 37 40 combo with infantry divisions and nine special forces divisions and actually uh uh, we can't make these guys any unique. So we have three battle tanks, one motorized division, and five anti-fascist helicopter divisions. And we immediately win almost every single battle, maybe except for one up here. Are we... Are, how, are we how much are we struggling with this group? Mm, oh, we're fighting over a river too, so that's not good. Regardless, we're going to lose a few men here and there. Makes sense. Um, guys, don't lose. Like, seriously, don't even lose. This is they're breaking our spirits. 4,000, 6,000, 14,000. By the time we're done here, they will all be dead. And with the helicopters moving in, I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, 3.8 billion. I haven't cut anything yet. That's a lot of GDP growth. I like that. I wish we could cut, cut down our debt, but, you know, whatever. Actually, these planes, these helicopters are moving somewhat slow, somewhat fast. Put artillery and engineers on them, but mm, we'll see. Manpower, 21, 22. Not bad, not bad. We're doing a little bit worse than what I thought we would be doing. Ooh, over here. They have early interceptors and fighters while we're using pre-war jet fighters. All right. All right. Well, we'll see what happens. I would like to force the attack. 11,000. Ooh, more technology. 31,000. 
Alright, as long as they're losing more divisions. And eh, we can grab some military construction for. Also, I went with this one, Streamline Automation Techniques 1, instead of this one, just because I always choose that other one, so. I chose something different this time. We're still building a lot of civilian factories up as well, so not too bad. We lost about 20,000 versus 44, 43. They have 50 divisions, we now know. Actually, just go this way. Just go, 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 go. Move quickly. Oh, they wanted to retreat, huh? Or if we could kill them all fast enough. Ah, yes. Die. Oh, that's nice. That's very nice, actually. Slowly but surely, they shall all perish. Slowly, one of these battles will killing more than the, than the killing of us. Great. Only 300 some factories? That's not enough, but... Of course, trying to build a bigger airport was kind of a problem. I should have spent more time and effort on making more planes. But we're doing okay for now. We actually need a lot more main battle tanks. This is a weird campaign where we're actually able to afford helicopters and tanks. So, you guys are not allowed to lose. I'd rather lose divisions than lose any battle. So, 32,000 versus 175,000. That's not enough. Just not enough. Uh, passive defense, sure. Pause all that stuff. We want Siberian Kingdom done. Civilian budget boost at this point. What else we slash it? Goes down a little bit more, goes down a little bit more, goes down a little bit more. There we go. That's better. One, two, three, some. That's still not bad. We've lost about 53,000 versus a third of a million. Not bad. Not great, but not bad. I haven't lost any divisions yet. Yeah, it's a little disappointing that we can't just march straight in, but whatever. Kill every single one of them off. Over a third of a million have died. We'll probably lose up to 100,000 in this war. Maybe a little more. They still have 12,000 manpower, but... I don't think they'll be able to do too much against us. There you go. Build that one up faster first, because it's getting close to being done. Uh, yeah, it's just better if you just manually control the choppers. So we can move so quickly. I should have got some logistic companies, too. That probably would have been helpful, actually. It's alright though. Oh, we'll probably. I'm gonna assume up to 150,000 maybe. Revise the casualty count. Uh, we have more divisions than them now. They have taken almost 400,000 casualties. Which is good, which is good. Come on, helicopters. Uh, any upgrades? No, it's level 4 though. That's nice. Good. Another division destroyed. Actually, how close are they to capitulating? Halfway. Not bad, not bad. Oh, Rurik. What natural spirits does he have? Legacy of the Severe Implant. Oh, wait, hold on. Consumer goods, 30%. That's pretty bad, actually. Uh, Esoteric Kingdom. Revolutionary King. New Sobor. We have many, plenty of enough manpower. Royal Union Shackled. Cool. Signal companies. I guess they got signal companies too, huh? That's alright. We can throw them on here if we really want to. There you go. Makes it a little better. Why not? Now our guys actually should be able to hit harder. That'll be good. Can we throw them on here as well, maybe? Yes, we can. Very nice. Very, very nice. Camarovo is ours, which is great. Don't let him go anywhere. Come on, guys. Don't let him go. Don't let him leave. Black market tr arms trades increases. Yeah, we've lost quite a few. A lot more guys than I thought we would. This is disappointing. I'll be honest. It is quite disappointing. I thought our soldiers would be better than this, but I guess not. And you're just sitting there. Absolutely shameful. Shameful. I thought we said not one step back. Why are you stopping? There can be no stop. Yeah. No, oh, Rurik. Two thirds of a million. Now he's got to be out of manpower, right? Yeah, he's out. He's lost a few more factories. We've pretty much doubled, at least doubled his army size, which is nice. We've captured Okutsk. 
think the biggest thing is that he actually does have an Air Force, which is kind of hurting us, actually. He has quite a bit, few interceptors, which kind of sucks, but whatever. Maybe next time I'll use some anti-air or something like that. Oh. Increase military spending. Slash us a little bit more. Pay off a little bit more of the debt. There you go. And we're barely making anything, but that's fine, whatever. There you go. Cut him off, kill him off. Good. 700,000 are dead. Come on, give up. Give up, Rurik. We'll execute him for the traitor he is. Can't win, huh? That sucks. They're only motorized. There we go. Let's do it again. Very good. Very good. Force the attack. Tons of breakthrough. Tons. Italy acquires nuclear weaponry. Black market trade increases. I don't really care. If the tank division dies, and so be it. It wasn't very worthy. I mean, even this is even with Spartan discipline. Like this is ridiculous. Come on, just give up. Go, 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 go. Air assault four. Let's grab some more anti-tank and hardness and such like that. Good. Kill them off. And you, Yep, that's good. You guys keep attacking. We'll get there. My god, you are so slow. Help attack here immediately. Good. Another couple dead. 855,000. They have six divisions left. We should be able to win this in basically like right now. Come on. Come on. Kingdom of Siberia will fall to us as they should. Infantry. Come to Magadan. They should be able to do that pretty darn quickly, right? Eh, better than using infantry, I suppose. Capital's all the way down there, actually, so. There you go. That should be easier to get to, right? Yeah, where is Rurik? I'm going to kill Rurik off. There we go. Where is him? Where is he? Where's him? Where is he? Alright. Core everything, and we're going to lose a lot of political power and stability. Well, we're going to lose about 3.4 stability every week. And we get a map power change. That's not bad. Anything else? Not really, no. Let's pause the game and reunify the motherland, my friends. The rebirth of the Soviet Union. If you'd like to read about this, go right ahead. Tukhachev's gives down it. Krasnaya Armia Vesey Silne. All right, and a red dawn. Cool. So, as so, dusk approaches a new order. If you enjoy this campaign, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I will see you tomorrow in a different campaign. Thank you for playing, and thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your day.